Well, let's get more on this story now. Um, we're going to speak to Tom Tugendhat. He is a member of the British Parliament and he's also chair of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee and joins me live. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, given the, Hello, the evidence and the, the trail of evidence that we've uh, been privy to so far, is there any doubt in your mind that this incident was a state-sponsored act of attempted murder and that the state in question is Russia? Well, it's beginning to be increasingly unlikely that there is an alternative uh, to that hypothesis because we're dealing with a nerve agent which would have been controlled very closely by the Kremlin and uh, it will no doubt have chemical fingerprints, which, uh, of course, I haven't been privy to, but I'm sure the scientists at Port and Down will by now know uh, which laboratory most likely made it and, uh, and therefore will have a very good idea as to who controlled it. And, you know, this guy uh, who is in hospital and his daughter... Uh, are uh, people who have been named by um, the Kremlin in 2010 mm. um, and threatened already. If indeed it is found that Russia is to blame for this, what can, what should the UK do to punish the Kremlin? Well, the first thing the UK has got to do is make sure that we've got the right uh, culprit. And I, I, as I say, I don't think there's much doubt anymore, but, uh, but we've got to make sure we're right. And then what we've got to do is to identify the relevant people who are coming into the country, who are um, linked to the Kremlin regime and who uh, need to be stopped. You know, we are dealing with people who have spread corruption around the world. We know about uh, what people are referring to as fake news, but actually it's not fake news, it's information warfare. We've seen the Mueller inquiry in uh, the United States. We've seen the attempt at skewing the election in France. We've seen uh, similar sort of attempts at skewing or using, exploiting um, the uh, migrant crisis in Germany and so on. Mm. So we've seen many attempts at this and indeed in Montenegro we've also seen an attempt to murder uh, the Prime Minister of Montenegro only, only a year or so ago. So, you know, we've seen a, we've seen a pattern of this uh, and we've just got to make sure that those who are uh, travelling to sow this pattern of terror are stopped and anybody supporting the Kremlin has their assets frozen. The British government, indeed the UK authorities more broadly, haven't exactly covered themselves in glory, shall we say, over the course of the last decades uh, with incidents similar to this. I'm talking, of course, about the case of Alexander Litvinenko and the poisoning on UK soil. How do you respond to criticism from the public, from the media, that the government here in the UK has been slow to, to get to grips with this story, slow to, to act? Well, look, I'm calling on the government to do much more now. I mean, I think we've got to be reasonable and say... It never occurred to the government in, uh, in when the Litvinenko incident happened that any state would use um, nuclear material as a means of poison. Uh, it, it simply never occurred to them. And, and, and why should it? No responsible state would do so. Only a rogue state would. And once uh, the Kremlin was uh, clearly identified as the source of that terror attack um, a number of years ago, People thought that that was uh, enough to stop the Kremlin because actually we've been reaching out the hand of friendship to the Kremlin and trying to get the Kremlin to come and play the role that it should, which is a responsible role as a peace builder in the world. Russia is a very, very important country to global stability and a very important country to Europe and indeed to the bridge between Europe and Asia. So we're very keen that Russia should play that role. The problem is the regime in the Kremlin seems much more uh, determined to support Assad as he gasses and murders his own people, change the borders in Ukraine by force. The first time it's been done since 1945, of course, let's not forget, with the occupation of Crimea, or indeed seizing territory in Georgia or, or, or attacking uh, the Baltic states through cyber attacks. So, you know, we Let me just pick up on this point that you just made, sir. So that you, you talk about reaching out that, this hand of friendship to Russia. I'm wondering how UK-Russia relations, as they stood nine days ago, for example, have impacted the pace, perhaps the tone of this particular investigation. Has the UK perhaps gone easy on Russia because of the, the, the tense nature of their, their political dynamic? No, I think the uh, I think the UK government has been very sensible in making sure that it's got the evidence. I mean, I I am uh, looking at the uh, way that the, uh, the the evidence lies, and I'm joining the dots and and possibly going a little further than the government can. The government, of course, has got to be much more certain. And so what they're doing is they're waiting for the analysis to come back from Port and Down, and they're waiting for the intelligence and security services to come back with their information. And no doubt they're consulting with uh, colleagues uh, in uh, the United States, in France, and in other uh, intelligence communities. 
Um, but it's quite clear that now the time is coming very close to, to, to acting, and I suspect that that's the statement that the Prime Minister is going to make in about an hour. We appreciate your time, and we will, of course, uh, stay across the British Prime Minister's statement as and when she does indeed make it. Tom Twigenhat, thank you. Thank you.